Hi everybody, it's Dr. Ripka, and we're long distance learning. We're going to start the genetics unit, learning a little bit about heredity, Mendel's Law of Genetics, and the Punnett Square. Before we get started, I'd like you to make sure that you have this worksheet in front of you, where I've already filled in all the information, but I'll be going over it to help you understand it better. In addition, I'd like you to get a piece of paper and have a pen ready so you can write the terms and the definition just as we see here. For example, genetics. Make two columns, one with term, one definition. Genetics is the term, study of heredity is the definition. And heredity, the passing of genetic information from parent to offspring. In addition, for this lesson, I'd like you to get uh, a couple of colored pencils, a green, a yellow, and a purple, uh, to color in different characteristics of pea plants when we get to a, a little bit later. So do this now, and then we'll go on with the lesson. Heredity. Well, we just studied human reproduction, and in human reproduction you have two parents, the offspring are a combination. Asexual reproduction, there's only one parent. The offspring are identical to the parent. And we see the human reproduction right here with the egg and the sperm. This is a sign for a female. It's a circle with a little cross at the bottom. And this is a technical sign for a male, is a circle with an arrow pointing upwards to the right. The egg and the sperm came together, formed the zygote, and then the zygote uh, duplicated and went through cleavage and then specialized in differentiation of cells to produce a baby. Gregor Mendel, which is this guy right over here, Gregor Mendel is called the father of genetics. He worked in the mid-1800s with pea plants, just like the peas that you're eating on your table and carrots and peas. In fact, nobody really knew why characteristics from the mother and father blended together and produced similar traits in the offspring, children. Peas have easy traits to study, such as short or tall plants, green or yellow pods, meaning Mendel picked a plant, the pea plant, because it was easy to see what was a really tall plant or a really short pea plant when he grew them, and if they were green or yellow on the outside of the pod. Number four, genetics is the study of heredity. And heredity is the passing genetic information from parent to offspring. I'd like you to watch this video when you get a chance. It's really interesting about some of your traits. Let's go to page two. Number six, genes are units of information that make proteins. A, they're small sections, bands or areas located on your chromosomes. You know, we just studied about chromosomes. Remember, interphase, metaphase, prophase, anaphase, all the different phases. And you know, the chromosomes condense uh, from being uh, an interphase, they're spread out, and uh, then they get into a prophase, they start condensing. And what was interesting to note is they have areas sometimes called bands of genetic information. And on one chromosome, there could be hundreds or thousands of different genetic instructions. You get one chromosome from your mother and one from your father. And therefore, there are two genes in your body for every trait. You have one trait from the mother and one from your father. That's why they're called homologous chromosomes, meaning of the same type. These genes or bands of information are units of heredity that determine the traits that you get. They determine your traits and characteristics such as whether or not you have an attached earlobe or a free earlobe. That comes from your parents. Maybe you have the widow's peak. A few of us do in the class where your hair comes down to a little point in the middle or maybe you don't. And maybe you have a cleft chin or no cleft chin. These traits come from your parents. What was Mendel's contribution to genetics? His first, number eight, was the law of dominance. 
In a cross or mating between two pure contrasting, meaning different traits, like tall and short, pea plants, the offspring only look like the dominant parent. A, only one trait will appear in the offspring. The trait that appears in the offspring is dominant, and the trait that does not appear in the offspring is recessive. Two genes, sometimes called alleles, control each trait. A lot of this you had last year in middle school biology. The dominant gene is the stronger gene. They always express themselves. The dominant gene is represented by an uppercase letter. For example, we could use an uppercase T for the tall gene in pea plants. The dominant gene is seen in hybrids, producing the dominant trait. Letter F, the recessive gene, is the weaker gene that's hidden by the dominant gene. The recessive trait only occurs when both genes, meaning one from the mother and one from the father, are both recessive. The recessive gene is always represented by a lowercase letter. In this case, we would use a lowercase t for the short gene in pea plants. Let's go to the next page. Letter G. The genes t capital T and lowercase t represent the plant height in peas, whether it's very tall or short. Two more terms to be aware of. Number nine, genotype. A genotype is the actual combination of genes in an organism. And phenotype is the actual appearance of an organism. Let's make sure you have those green, yellow, and purple pencils out now, or markers. Here are some different characteristics. The shape of the seeds, the color of the seeds, the pod that it came out of the height of the plant, or the color of the flower, and whether it's dominant or recessive. The shape of the seeds is either round or wrinkled. Color that in green. And the color of the seeds in plants, if it's dominant, you actually get a yellow seed. And if it's recessive, it's a green seed. Most of us eat the green peas. That's a recessive trait. The actual pod, you know, like peas in a pod, there are a bunch of pea seeds. The dominant trait is green on the outside. The recessive trait is yellow. And we talked about the height of pea plants. Look how many leaves and branches, that's tall. <coughs> Excuse me. And short has many fewer. Color those in green. And finally, the flower color. Most pea plants have purple flowers. That's the dominant trait, but the recessive trait is white. They could also have a white flower. I hope you're having a colorful time. Let's move on. Do you remember doing the Punnett squares? Well, the Punnett square is a method to predict genes and traits and crosses between two organisms. A, it shows the genotype of each parent on the X and Y axis. And we're going to see the Punnett square in just a second. And it shows the segregation, the meiosis, of the alleles or genes. It shows possible genotypes of the offspring. You must interpret the phenotype of the offspring. And here are some of the rules. Homozygous means the same genes or the same type. Homo is a prefix that means same. You know, the other version of homo that we learned is when homo is a word, like in homo sapiens, meaning wise people. Let number two, two identical genes are homozygous control a trait. For example, capital T, capital T, means the pea plant is tall. Both the mother and father contributed a tall T gene. Whereas a small T, small T means the pea plant's going to be short because the mother and the father contributed a short gene. Those are the easy cases when the gene is the same type. 
either both tall or both short. But heterozygous means different. Hetero means different. A heterozygous combination is called a hybrid. That is, two different genes controlling a trait, like short or tall is a trait. One parent in this case contributed the tall gene, capital D, T, and one contributed a short gene, a small t. That's a hybrid. It's a combination of genes. In this case, the big T, little t, one tall and one short gene, only the dominant gene is expressed in the hybrid. In this case, the plant will be tall because it's got the tall gene in it. This is Mendel's law of dominance. When you have a hybrid, two different traits combined, only the dominant trait is expressed. It's kind of like when you go out with your friends and you're trying to decide what you want to do, you know, when you're a group of buds, and one person says, let's go to the movies, and everybody says, okay, let's go to the movies. Or that same person says, uh, let's eat popcorn. Everybody gets popcorn. That would be the dominant person in the group. And the people who go along with it are more recessive. Here's a Punnett square. In this case, the capital Y is the dominant color for yellow. Notice a Y is yellow. That's the dominant gene. And a lowercase y is recessive. Oh, look at that. It's got a big y there. I'm just changing it right now for you. Okay, there we go. Sorry. And I'm going to save it. Sorry, that little mistake. The small lowercase y is recessive. That's the green color. The dominant color is yellow for the pea seed. And the recessive color is green. It's kind of an interesting thing. You can tell your parents next time you have parrot, par uh, carrots and peas that you're eating the recessive pea because it's the dominant, so yellow. They also can get yellow peas. Now let's see. On the x-axis, in this case it's up here, we have a y and a y, two dominant genes for yellow. And on the y-axis, we have two lowercase y's. We're splitting them up, mother and father, mother and father, mother and father. And then we combine them. Remember doing this last year? Is it coming back? So big Y, little Y, big Y, little Y, big Y, little Y, big Y, little Y. That's the combinations that go together. That combination of two genes is called the genotype. But how does it look? That's the phenotype, how it looks. And in this case, the rules of law of dominance says if there's even one uppercase large letter, that's the dominant gene. It's always the dominant trait. So all the seeds are going to look yellow. So we're going to have from a crossing of a pure yellow and a pure green, four yellow seeds and zero green seeds appearing in the cross. We'll be doing some Punnett square exercises in another video. Now there's something also called incomplete dominance. It's a rare situation. When the two genes are equally dominant, neither gene is stronger. The two genes influence the appearance of a third phenotype, for example, in the plant, the Japanese snapdragon. You can have a pure red plant and a pure white plant, and if you cross them, all the offspring are pink. A red crossed with a white produces a pink. So this does not obey the law of dominance. It's called incomplete dominance or codominance. In cattle, we have the similar situation. You could have a pure white, whitish looking cattle and, or cow, or a darker reddish looking one. And if you combine them, you get WR or RW, 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 RW. They all are cows with a little bit of both, some white and some red spots. So they do not show complete dominance for color. It's incomplete dominance. And the last thing I want to go over, because the Regents loves to ask these questions on perspective of relationships, genes are smaller than chromosomes, and chromosomes are smaller than the nucleus. Here's a cell. 
here is the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, you have the chromosomes. And on the chromosomes are these dark and light bands of information, your genetic information, your heredity. So the nucleus is the biggest, the chromosome's in the middle, but an actual gene is only a small part of a chromosome. This is Dr. Ripka congratulating you on studying heredity and genetics.